Hey, I'm VK Tech, and this is a floating carpet. So how did I make this? Well, in Walnut 13 Plus, pistons do some strange things. So if a piston attempts to retract a slime block structure that can't actually move, the piston head won't send out any updates. So if we put a carpet on top and then retract it, the carpet just stays floating. And you could do this with a few other things. You can do it with signs, for example. Um, make double-sided signs, even. Uh, which won't... Oops. <laughs> um, you can make double-sided signs, which won't break when updated. So, because the sign is resting on another block, which is the other sign. Um, and so it doesn't actually break. And you can do the same with banners. So double-sided banners you can make. Um, but nothing really useful. Double-sided banners and signs are kind of a neat party trick, but nothing more. Um, you can't slice portals or anything with this. So I was messing around and you can make floating sand with this as well. So this is a automatic floating sand uh, creator. Little circuit, just a standard piston monostable. Two game tick pulse into here to push the sand up and then four game tick pulse into here after a bit of delay to push out and then retract the piston so it tries to pull back the slime blocks but doesn't. It leaves the sand floating. Um, so the sand falls down, it just goes back up. And something interesting about sand that I noticed when I was looking through its code is that when it schedules the tile tick for it to fall, um, so when it, it gets updated and then it schedules a tile tick and then for, for, two, for two game ticks later, and then once that executes, it will um, try to fall. Um... So when it does that, it doesn't actually do that in response to block updates. So there's a few types of updates in um, in Minecraft. There's block updates, which is placing, removing blocks. Most changes to the world produce block updates. But there are some which don't, like um, opening and closing a fence gate. But they do produce an observer update. So an observer will react to that. But a but a piston will not. So you can see that this this is a typical bud switch responds to blocks being placed, but doesn't respond to the fence gate being opened or closed. But sand will. So if I put a fence gate here, make the sand floating again. You can see that if I open the fence gate, the sand falls. So sand actually responds to observer updates rather than responding to block updates. And you can use that to create this, which is possibly the most pointless thing I've ever made, um, which is an observerless observer. So it responds to observer updates and powers a no block. Um, it's just the same circuit as here, but reconfigured a little bit so that we automatically trigger it when the sand falls using this bud. So the observer update updates the sand, it starts falling then this, this bud uh, get triggers, and then that will power the pistons in the correct sequence to make the sand float again, and it will also send an output to this note block. So, completely pointless, uh, but kind of interesting. So that's why I thought I'd share it. Um, yeah. Bye!